They say you've got to spend money to make money, and plenty of major movies have translated huge budgets into even greater returns. But sometimes, pricey, high-profile projects just don't pay off. Here's a look at some big-budget films that were almost totally rejected by North American audiences. Cutthroat Island Making a pirate movie that looks good is always going to be expensive. The details don't come cheap, and neither does top talent. For the sweeping 1995 pirate adventure Cutthroat Island, Carol Co. Pictures tapped Rennie Harlan, a proven action director who just helmed two hits, Die Hard 2 and Cliffhanger. Harlan's pick to star? Academy Award winner Gina Davis, who was also his wife at the time. Bad dog. But Davis wasn't a proven action star, and pirate movies hadn't been successful in Hollywood for decades. This was pre-Pirates of the Caribbean, after all. The film's $98 million budget was put to good use, but critics pounced on the movie and the public stayed away in droves. Carol Coe was already pushed so far into the red that the company filed for bankruptcy in 1995. Cutthroat Island's paltry $10 million box office take following its release a month later didn't help. Town & Country it was supposed to be just a standard romantic comedy aimed at an older, upscale audience, yet it took three years in the budget of a summer sci-fi blockbuster to get town and country to theaters. Warren Beatty stars as a wealthy, philandering architect married for 25 years to an interior designer played by Diane Keaton. The couple's friends, played by Gary Shandling and Goldie Hawn, are caught up in their own infidelity mess and further relationship hijinks ensue when the action switches from town to country. The film's projected budget of $44 million included $10 million for Beatty, who reportedly was such a perfectionist that his demand for endless retakes stretched out the film's shoot for years. Several of the film's stars also weren't happy with the screenplay and brought in their own script doctors to punch it up while the movie was in production. Total final cost of Town & Country? $90 million. Total domestic box office take of Town & Country upon its release in spring 2001? Just under $7 million. God, I wish I'd known that. Revolution. On paper, it sounds like an undeniable hit. Hugh Hudson, coming off the back-to-back -back critical and commercial hits Chariots of Fire and Greystroke, directed this epic revolutionary war movie as told through the eyes of Tom Dobb, a reluctant-to-fight New York State fur trapper played by Al Pacino. Oddly enough, this movie about the American fight for freedom was produced by a British studio and filmed in the English countryside. Still, $28 million was poured into Revolution, making it one of the most expensive movies of 1985, up there with Rambo First Blood Part II. But Revolution was a massive box office flop. It earned just over $350,000 in the US. The Adventures of Pluto Nash Sometimes, mixing two genres works wonders. Lethal Weapon's action-comedy hybrid being a classic example. But how about combining gangster movie, science fiction, and comedy? Not so much. Set in the year 2080, The Adventures of Pluto Nash starred Eddie Murphy as an ex-smuggler who gets out of prison and buys a mob-connected nightclub on the moon using some Lunar States of America cash. Why don't you take these Hillary's? We appreciate you helping us out. The screenplay bounced around Hollywood for more than a decade before finally being produced in 2000, and then it sat on the shelf. Warner Brothers finally released it late in the summer of 2002, only to see it pull in just $4.4 at the domestic box office, which didn't even touch the film's staggering $100 million dollar budget. Lucky you. The mid-2000s poker craze begat a few poker movies, such as this 2007 drama about a second-generation card shark looking to compete in the World Series of Poker. Lucky You boasted an impressive lineup and was directed by Academy Award nominee Curtis Hansen, who co-wrote the script with Academy Award winner Eric Roth. Perhaps it was the level of top-notch talent that ran the budget of this low-key movie up to approximately $55 million. But that roster didn't attract big audiences. Lucky You pulled in just $5.7 at the domestic box office. It was a lukewarm reception that certainly wasn't helped by the negative reviews from critics like Rex Reed of the New York Observer, who argued that it doesn't have enough energy to keep the most catatonic tournament poker addict awake. Monkey Bone well, it's certainly original. Monkey Bone is about a cartoonist played by Brendan Fraser who, while in a coma, travels to a dark fantasy land called Downtown. There, he must defeat both Death Incarnate and Monkey Bone, an evil cartoon monkey of his own creation. Mixing live action and animation is a technically demanding and expensive task, and director Henry Selick, best known for The Nightmare Before Christmas, ran up a tab of $75 million. Executives relieved Selick of his directorial duties after a terrible test screening, calling for a brand new cut of the movie. Then executive producer Chris Columbus oversaw another edit to make it more palatable. All the while, the release date was changed so often that the studio only had two weeks before its March 2001 one opening to mount an advertising campaign. The end result for Monkey Bone? Domestic revenues of just over $5 million. Geely It's a punchline in film history synonymous with flop. 
and for good reason. For starters, 2003's Geely has a title that isn't immediately pronounceable, and a plot that falls somewhere between nonsensical and offensive. Ben Affleck plays a thug tasked by his criminal bosses to intimidate a federal prosecutor by kidnapping her developmentally disabled brother. Things don't go as planned, so they send in Jennifer Lopez, another gangster, to help him. Affleck winds up falling in love with her, but it turns out that she's gay. Nothing about Geely seemed terribly promising on paper, but it earned extra attention when its stars wound up in a tabloid-ready relationship, ultimately amplifying the negative pre-release buzz. When it arrived in theaters in August 2003, critics destroyed it. Against a reported $54 million budget, the film took in a hair over $6 million and was pulled from theaters after just three weeks. This deprived many filmgoers the opportunity to hear Christopher Walken praise Marie Callender's as only he can. Mm, good. Put some on your head. Your tongue would slap your brains out trying to get to it. And now you've witnessed the only good thing to have come out of Geely. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.